Okay, fourth period algebra, what's going on? So today should be Tuesday. Um, yesterday, Monday, you guys did an assignment where you were factoring trinomials that had a leading coefficient greater than one, okay? That was something everybody's struggling with. I need everybody to get on the same page with being able to do that comfortably, okay? Today, you're gonna take it a step further and we're gonna incorporate that factoring into then finding the zeros of those trinom of those um, factor forms, excuse me, and then we're gonna translate that over to a graph that we have been working on, showing how they actually how the uh, graph actually behaves after you've already factored them out and found the zeros. Okay, so stick with me, um, take notes on this, watch the process, and then I'm gonna show you guys exactly what you're expected to do on your assignment. Okay, so I'm gonna pick one trinomial that we're gonna factor out, and then you guys are gonna see exactly the process of how I want you to do this. Okay, pay attention. Okay, so consider the following. We have 7x squared minus 20x minus 3. Okay, so from our notes yesterday, we know our leading coefficient is greater than 1. So the first thing we need to do is multiply this leading coefficient by our constant. Okay, so we're going to take 7 multiply that by negative 3. Okay? Positive 7 times negative 3 is going to be negative 21. Okay? So, next step. We know we need to find two numbers, positive or and or negative or opposite, that are going to multiply to equal negative 21, but are going to add to equal negative 20. Okay? Now, just looking at this, I can tell right off the bat, it's, it's so obvious. The first one is going to be negative 21 times positive 1, okay? So, we have our negative 21 here plus positive 1 is going to equal negative 20, okay? Next step, we know we have to plug this back in, but it is going to eliminate this negative 20 and 21 is going to pick up the variable x. Positive 1 is also going to pick up the variable x. So, rewriting this, the 7x squared comes down. This negative 21 picks up the variable x. Positive 1 picks up the variable x. And then this negative 3 also comes down with it. Okay? This is now the next part that I'm going to uh, factor out. Okay? Next step, we're going to factor this out by the grouping method, okay? So we have our first two terms here, okay? We're gonna figure out what we can factor out first, okay? Greatest common uh, factor, the greatest common uh, factor between 7x squared and 21x is going to be 7x, okay? 7x goes into this, 7x goes into 21. So factor that out, 7x, okay? Now, we're going to distribute it back to see what we need to multiply 7x by to get 7x squared, which is just going to be x, okay? 7x times x is going to be 7x squared. Then we need to figure out what multiplies to get to 7x to get to negative 21x, okay? So we know if we have a positive here and a negative here, one of them's gonna have to be negative. We know this is already positive, so that's gonna have to be negative. So this is going to be, three. Okay. Is that right? Yep. So seven, positive seven X times negative three is going to give me negative 21 X. Okay. We're good right there. All right. Next part, we got a factor grouping this one. We have a positive one and a negative three. Okay. Greatest common factor that we can multiple that we can uh, distribute out or uh, factor out is going to be one. So we have a positive one. Okay. Now the next part, what do we multiply to get to one X? It's just gonna be X. What do we multiply one by to get to negative three? It's gonna be negative three, okay? Now, we have our common X minus three in here, and then we have our seven X plus one on the outside. Rewrite this out, seven X plus one, and then X minus three, okay? That would be my final answer if I wanted to just 
call it good right there. And I was just factoring out my uh, tri my trinomial with the leading coefficient greater than one. However, today's assignment, we're taking it a step further, okay? Um, substitute can pause the video here. I'm gonna erase this. The next part is we're gonna, I'm gonna show you guys how to find the zeros, factor that one of these parts even further, find the zeros and then put it on a graph, okay? So sub, you can go ahead and pause the video if the students need. I'm gonna erase all this. We're gonna put a graph up. Okay, so again, we came out with 7x plus 1 and x minus 3 for our final answer. But we want to factor this even further and find the zero so that we can put this in a graph, okay? So right here, x minus 3 is already good, so I just need to find the zero for that one. Obviously, we know if we're finding the root or the zero, it's going to be the opposite of whatever this is. So I know this is a negative three. My x for this one is going to flip and equal positive three. Okay, so I have my first x-intercept right here. Okay, next one. I still got to factor out the 7x plus 1. How do I do that? I got to set this equation to zero. Okay, so we're going to have 7x plus 1 is equal to zero okay you guys all took algebra one so the next step should be very simple you already know this okay we got the x on one side we need to isolate that by itself so we subtract one from this side subtract one from this side we end up with seven x equals negative one okay next part we got to divide seven divide the seven eliminates that here divide the seven eliminates that there so x is going to equal negative one over seven okay now don't get freaked out. You guys have seen this before, okay? You've seen fractions show up on a graph before, okay? It's gonna get, it's gonna look a little trippy, okay? Just, I picked a random problem. I didn't know it was gonna come out like a fraction like that, but you can still graph this, okay? Watch me work, okay? So right here, we're gonna set up our graph. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, now I got my x intercepts here. I'm gonna plug them in on the graph. First one, x equals positive three. It has a multiplicity of one, okay? x is equal to negative one over seven. It has a multiplicity of one as well, okay? Now, I don't expect you guys to get this exactly right. You guys are not, I mean, ex an exact point. You guys don't have graphing calculators. I get it, okay? Estimate, get your best guess, okay? So negative on, on the uh, number line right here, okay? Negative one seventh, okay? So one, so let's pretend you got seven spaces in between here. One is probably gonna be somewhere right there, okay? Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? Now, think back to our original equation, okay? We had seven x squared, okay? So we knew we had a leading coefficient that was positive, and we had a degree, func a degree of two, which means it was a second degree function. So we have a positive leading coefficient, okay? Which tells us how the graph is going to go. It's gonna end trending up, okay? And then we had a, second degree, which was an even degree, which means that they're going to start and finish the same exact way. So I can go ahead and write my arrows here. I know it's going to end going up and I know because it's even, it's going to start the same way. Okay. Then draw in my graph as because the multiplicity is one or an odd number. When it reaches the X intercept, it is going to go through the X axis. Okay. Obviously, if it was even, we know it would hit the x-axis and then bounce up. But because it's an odd number, an odd multiplicity of one, meaning this x-intercept shows up one time, okay, or an odd time, it is going to go through. Then I am going to have it go just like that. Okay, that is all you are doing today. Now, 
We haven't gone over how to determine um, how steep the uh, the um, how steep the peak is going to go, whether it's trending up or down. Okay, we're still not there. We're gonna get there going into this week when I come back. Okay, but your assignment today, you are going to take numbers one through ten on your factoring trinomials with a leading coefficient greater than one from the assignment that I gave you for Monday yesterday. Okay, you're gonna take numbers one through 10. You're going to follow the same exact process. I want you to, you should have already factored them out so where you should end up with an answer like this, okay? But I want you to take those same answers. One of them is more than likely going to look like this, okay? And then one's gonna obviously look like this. You're gonna find the zeros, find the roots of those to find your x-intercepts. Same thing with this one, factor it out. Some of them, I'm assuming, just from looking at this, you're probably going to end up with some little fractions in there for some of them, okay? Again, make it work. You know what to do, okay? So find the zeros, follow the steps, find the multiplicity. I think the multiplicity for most of them should probably be one. You're more than likely going to end up with graphs that look exactly like this, like a parabola, okay? So they're more than likely they're going to be a second degree function, and most of them, I think, are going to be positive. So... You should end up with a lot of graphs that look exactly like this, but the key takeaway I want you to do is learn the process, okay? Some of you are still struggling with the process. Some of you got it. Some of you are still struggling a little bit, but I want you to go through this process, make sure you got it down, and then um, we'll go from there. So you're going to take numbers 1 through 10, okay? You're going to follow the same process that you already did. Find the zeros, find the multiplicity graph them, okay? You're gonna have graph paper available, graph them um, for numbers one through 10, and then keep this with you. Everything that I'm having you guys do while I'm gone, I need you to keep with you until I get back. That way I can get them. I don't want the um, turn-in box to get flooded with a bunch of stuff all over the place. Okay, so keep everything with you. Um, we'll turn it in on Thursday to me when I get back, and then we'll pick up where we left off, all right? And that'll be it.